Nets. And hey, congratulations for Mother Android. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I found this film so captivating because it, it felt like a, like a zombie movie with, with just androids in a post-apocalyptic world. So it, 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 is, it is very, um, you know, thrilling. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. It, it, you know, a zombie apocalypse, maybe that could happen if we continue to play with virology. But at the same time, I, I think that the android apocalypse is, is the much more likely thing, the way that technology is going. Getting to blend those two genres, it's fun. You get to play. So, so what sparked you to uh, write the story for Mother Android for you? The movie is a, um, I would call it like a personal love letter to my own biological parents and my adoption story. Um, I wanted to take the five or six things that I know about them uh, and, and translate that into something that on the one hand is very fantastical and very you know, crazy apocalyptic. And on the other hand, uh, very real, personal and emotional. So it, it was always, can I tell this story that is extremely meaningful to me, but do it in a way that weaponizes genre so that people will see it and it'll be fun to make. <laughs> how, how did you come to the decision to make the setting, you know, in the, in the Northeast, um, most of the film in the forest, because out of any setting, you have to choose like one of the most difficult ones for production. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I grew up in Massachusetts and uh, I grew up not in Boston. I grew up in the woods and it was just a decision of it's my first movie. And I, I just I wanted it to really feel like me and feel very personal. And I, I, I really do feel like I'm a, a child of the woods. It's the place where I am the most comfortable and um, I'm always kind of trying to get back to it. And so setting my first movie there and also shooting in locations where it's not that I had been to all of those specific places, but as I'm writing in LA, I'm, I'm going, I, I know that that's there. I, I know that that's outside and in, in, in certain kind of rocks and certain kind of trees. Let me just write for the place that I really know, like the back of my hand, because it'll, it'll help me control visually what we get. So it was really just about going home. <laughs> it, what, was it really challenging to, uh, you know, to delve into, you know, with the rain and the mud and the running and and it, it was and challenging else. for the actors. I was fine. I, I, Love, love all of that stuff, but I'm also not the person that has to stand under a rain tower and, and be absolutely so. Sometimes I would just for like camaraderie uh, and then to try to try to keep the cast happy with me. Um, but no, you know, it, it really, um, that's the elements, man. Like that, that's, that's why we make films, being able to not be in a, a soundstage and go try to do some of it for semi-real is a lot of fun. I know. I was going to say that, that this film is unique because you introduce a, a nine-month pregnant woman, you know, um, on on her journey. So, um, tell us how um, Chloe uh, pull, pull the Chloe and you pull pull this off because I don't I don't see how this was comfortable for her <laughs> at all. <laughs> we pulled it off by her comfort being a tertiary thing. Um, yeah. No. I mean, we 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 had a a. a prosthetic belly and it, it weighed 20 or 21 pounds. And, you know, I, I had spent a lot of time talking to people who were pregnant or had been pregnant in my life to really kind of wrap my head around, okay, what, what does this feel like? What, oh, like your feet do not feel good. Well, that's not going to be great with having to hike across a state and just kind of trying to use all of that stuff. And, you know, for Chloe, a lot of it was the breathing and just kind of how long are we walking today? Oh, it's, we, we're trying to get 10 miles. Dude, that's a lot when you're carrying all of this extra stuff. So just try, try to lean into the reality of, of what a pregnancy is like and not have it kind of magically go away because the story needs her to move quicker in one moment or another. Now, um, one more thing. I, I, I know you, you've done a lot of great writing projects, but now you have a taste of, uh, be, you know, being, being at the helm. You, you want you want to basically uh, stick on the directing side to, because once you get once you once you have this experience, I don't know if you could go back. I'll always do both. It'll it'll always be parallel play for me. It's it's really nice to finally be able to write something and go, 
no, this is for me and you cannot have it. And to be able to fiercely defend the ones that are mine. At the same time, when you're a screenwriter, you just, you can work on a lot more stuff because it takes two, three years to make a movie at best. And it doesn't take that long to, to write a script. And so it just lets me work with a lot of cool people, get to know more people, get to work with some excellent filmmakers and 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 learn from them from their successes or their mistakes. So it it only adds to my toolkit. And dude, I also just love writing. So being able to do both, I I will do both, but hopefully there will be some more films I direct in the future. Well, I can't wait to uh, see more stuff from you in the in the future. Thank you very much, Manson, for uh, speaking to us about Mother Android. And once again, congratulations. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.